Hello and welcome to another classroom video and this is a tough one. It's pretty thick, you might have to watch it a couple times. I'm going to feature my Sport Gauntlet video where I compared the Idle Helios to the Zen Master, Axiom, and Phase 2 because there's a lot of everything to look at. Before we get into it, I'd appreciate you dropping down to the description after the video and checking out the links I have there. They're the ones that keep videos like this coming. One is to Bowlers Mart for any of your bowling needs. That link associates your purchases with me. My code ROSEDALL10 gets you 10% off your entire purchase at Coolwick. The code is in the description to copy and paste. Thanks to Storm, Turbo, and the SRGBBFS group on Facebook as well. Definitely should go check them out. Also, there's a new super thanks button below the video that allows you to leave me a tip other than that you can't board a show dog because it gets upset. Its hair falls out. I'm bowling on the 2019 Open Championships doubles and singles pattern, so it's a sport pattern, and I'll show all the shots I have in full speed while I'm rambling, then go back through a second time to isolate and slow them down and get more in depth, so pay more attention to my words right now. Once you know what to look for, it's easier to feel and monitor yourself without having to involve someone else. Ball reaction is extremely complex, tons of variables, and reading it correctly is sometimes difficult for even the best in the world. Even they miss moves or make decisions that don't work out, even if they've worked out in similar situations before, and sometimes in bowling, two wrongs do make a right. On the flip side, I don't know how many times I've seen people with great ball reaction make moves or ball changes due to bad execution that they're just not realizing. Bad ball reaction is really hard to recognize through bad execution. You have to start with execution quality and then move on to ball reaction. The same ball can look incredible on good shots and really bad on marginal or bad shots. Finding great ball reaction can give you extra forgiveness and versatility while also masking poor execution. If you develop a good awareness of when you're throwing it good and when you're throwing it bad, this helps you identify when the reaction you're getting is because of you or because of the ball. Put that together and you make smarter decisions. I'm probably overly sensitive when it comes to my execution, but that gives me a lot of clarity when it comes to both ball reaction and my mechanics. Being critical isn't a bad thing. It gives you a very sharp eye, which can be helpful. Now, being overly negative, however, can be a bad thing, depending on your temperament. Some people bowl quite well when they're angry. Other people are significantly hurt by it. Bad execution is way beyond location. This is why I both like and dislike Specto on the PBA shows, because while hitting targets is important, it's only one part of a dozen or more things that'll affect ball reaction, and this is the one this is one of the more common excuses I hear when a shot didn't react the way someone wanted it to or it didn't strike. Well I hit my mark or I hit the pocket. Sometimes those comments are genuinely valid. You can execute a great shot and get screwed by transition or by an unfortunate hit, and there is legitimately such a thing as throwing the ball too well, just ask EJ Tackett or BJ Moore especially, but here's a list of things that are important to pay attention to. Ball speed, foot speed, timing, swing path, angle of rotation, axis tilt, rev rate, how clean your release is, knee bend, spine tilt, shoulder position throughout, or basically the geometry of your posture because your execution is affected greatly by simple geometry and the things your body has to do to adjust if that geometry gets off. That's a different topic that I might dive into on another video, but a simple example is say you're standing up too straight or your shoulders are too closed. Then your arm swing has to go around your body which can create an unfavorable swing path, whereas if you get lower like EJ Tackett does, that gets his body out of the way so his arm can swing straight. They talk a lot about the bowler form on the PBA telecasts, and even those with quirky or unnatural looking form still do a lot of things really well that helps them create great ball reaction. Repetition is obviously most important. Every bowler does things that aren't textbook. That's what makes it fun. That's what makes people unique. It's definitely artistry, and what matters most is if the things you do are effective and if you can repeat them. There are a lot of what I'd call textbook bowlers that don't score as well as they look like they should, and that's because of mental game or poor reaction reading skills by and large. So for this specific topic of execution, I'm looking at a blend of quality form and repeatability or consistency shot to shot, uh, none of which we've really seen a lot of from me thus far. Uh, however, this will also help to display good and bad ball reaction when we get into that later. 
Execution and ball reaction are also directly related. It's easier to be relaxed and execute better when you have good ball reaction and much tougher to execute when you have bad ball reaction. So sometimes your execution errors or inconsistency can be caused by bad ball selection and lane play. Uh, Belmo is as good as he is in large part due to great execution, but his ball reaction reading skills are among the best in the history of the game. So, so much so that when they're developing new Belmo balls, his comments during testing are as important, if not more so, than Specto because he can tell them small details and nuances that you aren't going to see reflected on the data. This is something I think I've got a talent for as well. Digging a little deeper and getting into some of the intangibles and hitting the nuances and explaining the ball reaction period beyond the numbers and tech data. So our first look here is winding down. I'm sure you've noticed a lot of basic stuff here, but there's a lot of bad shots I struck on and good shots that I didn't. So we're going to talk about it now and slow everything down. I'm targeting five for my break point because in warming up, everything seemed to universally work from there no matter where I was standing or what I was using. If I got it out further than that, it sometimes didn't want to get back, and if I got it inside of that, it wanted to overhook. If I threw it good and hit five at the break point, I was going to be in good shape at the pocket the vast majority of the time, and this is with my normal speed and rev rate, so five is the sweet spot. There's plenty of oil in this pattern, so I felt comfortable with what I needed to do. Identifying this first helps me then judge the ball reaction. With five down lane being the goal, now we start with good execution quality. When I threw it well, the Axiom and Idle Helios went through the pins the best. The P2, uh, this one specifically, is a little straighter off the end of the pattern, something that's not that great for me, and I had to, I had to be absolutely perfect with the Zen Master and then hope. I think after watching through the first time, you'd probably agree, and this is just watching for whatever your eyes pick up and for the feeling you get, nothing specific. The P2 didn't look bad, it just didn't look as good as the Axiom and Helios. Now we back down to good execution quality, but maybe just missing slightly on targeting or accuracy. The phase two gave me a bit of room either direction. If I got it out of touch, it'd at least get back. If I got it in a touch, it'd give me a bit of push. The Zen Master didn't give me anything either direction and sometimes wouldn't even give me anything if I aced it. The Axiom gave me almost two boards either side of five. Wildly good. The Helios gave me the most misroom to the outside, but absolutely zero inside. The winner as far as ball reaction goes on forgiveness for targeting or accuracy is the Axiom. Next, we're going to back down even further and start getting into marginal execution. This is where it gets trickier. Now I'm looking for some simple or basic physical errors beyond just missing my target. Now I'm looking for dumping it, which means both getting it too far out and getting more up the back of it or making it roll more forward. Bowling balls want to roll in the direction they're being rotated, so natural if I'm rolling it forward, it's not going to magically hook a different direction. The opposite mistake would be getting around it too much. This is going to make it really want to dive sideways hard. The other obvious one is speed, throwing it too hard or throwing it too slow. The Zen Master of course was the most sensitive, but balls like this can be incredibly helpful to practice with because they won't hide any mistakes or let you get away with anything. So realistically, in a twist of fate, my misses are best illustrated by the Zen Master, which makes it the most important footage out of all of this. Also, you don't want to practice with stuff that you take to league or tournaments and put any more games than you have to on them. If they're good, don't wear them out faster practicing with them. Practice with stuff that's disposable or that makes you better. The phase two was the next most sensitive to my inaccuracies. If I dumped it, it'd roll out. If I got around, it'd really take off. It was marginal on speed misses, but I don't tend to miss speed very often. It's usually accuracy and angle of rotation with me. Now, knowing your tendencies is something else to be aware of because it zones me in on the Axiom and Helios more. The Helios lets me get away with a little bit of both, but it also allows me to throw it faster should I so choose. So naturally that means it's going to be more forgiving on shots that are thrown too hard rather than too slow. The Axiom also let me get away with a fair amount of everything, so at this point the Axiom is still ahead due to the extra forgiveness on targeting, but they're pretty comparable on basic physical mistakes. Next, we're going to get into some basic algebra, complex misses, and canceling misses. The famed rocket to the pocket is a canceling miss where you miss inside but also throw it too hard, so they kind of offset. Another canceling miss would be throwing it too slow but also missing outside, giving the ball time to dig in and recover. Complex misses would be either one of those plus something else, like getting slow, 
uh, getting it out, but also rolling it too far forward. In that case, they aren't going to cancel. It's going to sit there. Or getting fast, tugging it, and getting around it. Probably not going to get away with that. These are what people have the most trouble recognizing. Targeting is relatively easy to see if you're paying attention and being honest. Same thing with throwing it too hard or too slow. But missing on angle of rotation and tilt doesn't get seen much. And that's unfortunate because they're critically important and can really damage your eye for ball reaction and your decision making. If you throw a good shot but get around it too much and it goes high and you don't recognize that as the reason, all of a sudden you're thinking that there's transition that isn't there yet. Which makes you start thinking about moving or making a ball change. Same thing if you get at the back of it too much then it doesn't quite get back or it hits flat same result it gets you chasing ghosts this is what drives me insane about watching other people especially when they think they threw it good and drive by a nine pin or something i can see off their hand that they got around it or they let it go a little late and their tilt was off and the ball cuts through the pins they think they got screwed and i'm thinking they got lucky the four pin wasn't up there with it too a couple more things to watch for are tempo and timing get too fast or slow with your feet and the shot isn't going to be as pure. Think of it like throwing a baseball. Winding up and planting and then throwing it is going to impart and transfer more energy to the ball versus throwing it while you're still running. Poor tempo or timing is going to cause a lot of other issues and at the least it's going to come off your hand dead or like a wounded duck so there may not be much else wrong with it but the roll integrity just isn't going to be there. Now that I've mentioned all these things, you should be seeing some kind of error on pretty much every shot I'm throwing. To avoid making this any longer than it already is, once it's done, start the video over again, maybe turn the sound off and just watch and apply the things we talked about so that you can see that even on shots you thought were fine the first time through, now you're seeing different things. Those different things in turn start explaining a lot of the reaction and some of the hits, like the phase two reaction we'll isolate here as an example. This is a flat seven that I got too far up the back of and that my timing was bad on, so instead of getting through the ball and projecting it, I kind of flipped my hand around it and winged it. Sure, I hit five, but my overall execution quality was very low. Next shot, got too far around it, speed was too slow, so it dug in and overhooked. Timing was way too early on the shot before, so as a result, it was too late on this shot now, and I didn't get it off my hand that clean. Next shot wasn't great, but I also hit some transition that made the ball hook early. The problem here is that bad shots will exacerbate transition, good shots will mute it. If you throw a good clean shot, it's not going to be as sensitive. Next shot, it just kind of bailed on it. The whole hand came out of the ball at the same time, just kind of pushed it or shoved it, didn't roll it, so it went a couple extra feet and came in late. Now this is one you pay attention to because the ball reaction covered your mistake and lets you get away with something. Next shot was pretty good. Clean, crisp snap off my hand at the bottom. I got my shoulders open a little more, which allowed my swing path to be straighter. I didn't dump it or grab it. It was a nice, clean, and confident shot. The next shot I got cute on. The timing was too early, stood up too straight, shoulders were a little too close, but I still managed to get it off my hand clean, so I got away with another one. Even got a little bit too far out, and it got back, so that's another eyebrow-raising moment. Uh, next shot, too far up the back of it, but threw it good otherwise. I'm getting in deeper here, so I'm intentionally slowing everything down, and I was worried about getting around it too much because it's still pretty flat in the middle. Final shot, I made the adjustment, and all I did was get around it more. Same speed, same target, same quality of release, but instead of mixing them up, it was dead flush. I'll leave you on your own to go explore the rest of Wonderland now that I, as the boring droning Absalom, have called you a stupid girl and sent you after the Jabberwocky. <laughs> Once again, if you like the jersey, code ROSEDALL10 gets 10% off at Coolwick. It's in the description for you to copy and paste. Please follow my Bowlers Mart link to make your equipment purchases. Check out SRGBBFS on Facebook for all things SPI. Thanks, Turbo. Extra thanks to Storm. Extra, extra thanks to you for watching, and may the strikes be with you.